Hey guys, and welcome to The Psychologist. Today I wanted to do a quick video on Seiko's most famous chronograph movement, the 6139. This is a 6139B movement that I have, uh, I've just overhauled. And I wanted to talk about some of the particular issues with the 6139 movement, some of the things that we have to address uh, and repair when these come in for restoration. Uh, this particular model is, I believe it's a 7010. Uh, can't quite remember now off the top of my head. Uh, we can see the beautiful dial here. Lovely watch. It's, it's aged so well. We can see that nice patina, that nice creamy patina uh, on the loom markers there. We see a little bit of damage on the dial around here. But, uh, but nothing too major. Uh, but all in all, such a beautiful watch. Uh, this particular watch was sent to me by the son of its owner. And uh, it's been in the family since it was new. And uh, I got a couple of pages of story on the watch when it came in. Uh, I do really like getting those pages of stories because they provide some real real insight uh, into, into the watch. And it really gives it some special meaning for me. So I actually quite like it when the, when the stories come along with the watch. So this particular 6139B, uh, we can see one of the major problems that these watches can have is uh, the intermediate date wheel here, which is this small pinion underneath here, which uh, if we pull out to set the time, we can see helps engage the date wheel there. Now, that wheel sometimes is made of plastic. Now, when that wheel is made of plastic, uh, they have a problem where the teeth snap off. So that can be one of the major issues um, with the teeth snapping off on these watches. The other issue is changing the date, uh, changing the quick date when the date's about to change over and engage. We can see if we turn the hands around here, uh, you can see the date's going to change. Now, if we try to change the quick date, at this point, we're actually going to break that because that particular piece uh, is very delicate uh, and can cause uh, issues with breakage, etc. So we need to make sure that one of the best ways to do it, how I've been told, I can't remember who said it, but uh, I like to steal the idea because it seems so good, is when your hands are in the southern hemisphere, it's okay to change the date. So if we take the center line of the watch as the crown, um, that is the... Uh, at the moment, anyway, the center line, some of, some of the Seikos are offset, as you know. But when your hands, if your hands are in the northern hemisphere, don't quick change the date. If they're in the southern hemisphere, below this imaginary equator that we uh, we present here, then it's okay to change the date. Uh, obviously, to change the date on these, um, as I'm sure most of you know, we press in. I've got my finger in the way there. We press in, and that changes the date. Now, to change the day, we press a little harder. Now, what's interesting about the way the 6139 works is we have this lever here, which when this is our jumper for our day indicator. So now the day indicator is not put on at the moment, only the date indicator. But we have our jumper, and then we have our quick set lever here for the day indicator. So if you watch, when I set the date, it's, excuse me while I put this back in, it's a soft push. See, I do a little soft push and the date, this can be a bit pick, uh, tricky with the way I'm doing it. Uh, there we go. Almost there. It's a soft push. Okay, but if I push really hard, watch what happens to this finger here. You'll see that it's uh, always the way when you're filming, it doesn't want to play ball. Never wants to play ball when you film. See when I push hard, see how much more travel it has? So that is how we change the day. And that's the mechanism. When I just change the date, see, the inner lever, when I push lightly, it really only gets to the tip of the teeth on our hour wheel there. But when we push hard, it goes further. And that is what allows us to change the day on the 6139. Some other issues that come up 
with the 6139. We can see that this one's been serviced. It's looking nice and shiny. It was pretty filthy when it came in, but uh, after its uh, bath in the ultrasonic tank and overhaul, um, it, it, it's looking quite good now. Um, sometimes the bearings can get sloppy for the oscillating weight. These are the bearings here. Now, usually when these bearings uh, get sloppy, they need to be replaced, but I've actually come up with a method so that we can tighten these bearings up, uh, saving cost to the customer um, and, uh, and getting a further extended life out of the watch. Now, we get to the main issue with the 6139. Well, first we'll make sure that our uh, chronograph functions are working. We can see there our column wheels moving as we press the, press the functions, and we can see that our reset is working nicely as well. Now, one of the main issues with the 6139 is the barrel, is a sloppy barrel. Now, we won't be able to check the end shake too well, uh, too, 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 uh, too good here, because basically, once there's power on the barrel, but do you see how this barrel is sitting nice and flat? In between the plates. One of the issues is these Seikos use brass bushings, as most watches do. Most older watches will use brass bushings, but the Seikos have been neglected and let sit for so long that they're so worn. What happens is this barrel actually starts rubbing on the plate here and then rubbing on the top of the bridge. So you might see older Seikos that have a line. This is nickel-plated brass, and then the brass actually rubs, and that causes chaos with amplitude, timekeeping, duration of run, etc. So what we do in this situation is we like to jewel the barrel. We can see here that I have my 61 series lower barrel jewels and my 61 series upper barrel jewels. Now, these jewels we put in the plate in the in the uh, the main plate. This is the one for the main plate. Now, the one for the main plate, we actually have to ream out the main plate and fit the jewel in to the main plate. Now, to ream out the main plate, we use the sights jeweling tool. This is the correct size reamer, and we use this to ream out the main plate, and then we can fit the jewel. After we, uh, after we um, uh, have, have drilled out the hole. And the other thing, then we need to change the one in the plate. Now the one in the, in, is, sorry, in the bridge. The one in the bridge just presses out and we use our Horia tool uh, there to be able to press that out. And we also use the Horia tool to press in the one uh, in the main plate afterwards as well. We can see what happens. Here's a good example of a stripped down mostly stripped down, 6139 movement. Do you see this rubbing and this wear here, all this dirt? They really wear, the dirt and filth comes out of the barrel as well and mixes, and that is what happens. And also, they just wear inside. We can see how filthy that is. It's very difficult to see, but they wear, and the hole actually ends up oval in a lot of cases. It plays havoc with the timekeeping and the amplitude. And we can see in the top plate, it's kind of the same scenario in the top plate. This again, filth, absolute filth. So we push that out with our Horia tool. And then we can actually see the wear here. So what we do is we just push that out and then we pop a jewel in and then we cut the one out or drill the one out in the main plate and pop a, pop a uh, jewel in there. Now these jewels aren't actually made. There is no size of jewel available that you can buy to do this. So these actually have to be purposely made for this specific situation. Uh, a friend of mine in Australia uh, has them made, has them manufactured. Actually the same uh, man that makes these movement holders. Um, and so I purchased them off him and then we fit them in the plates and we really do get much better timekeeping results and um, uh, duration of run, we get a higher amplitude, uh, and they just generally are well worth the money. So I charge $60 on top of a full overhaul. Um, so that's $60 Canadian to do the barrel jewel upgrade. And it's something that only needs to be done once. 
and you never need to do it again. It improves the timekeeping greatly and it improves the overall running and it's a repair you only ever need to do once. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. It's at The Psychologist. Uh, and you can check out my website too, thepsychologist.com, uh, to follow my blog uh, and see all my information there.